everyone. Welcome to our creator panel. We are so thankful that you are here. My name is Ali, and I am tuning in live from the Kajabi headquarters. Um, I saw uh, in the chat, Irina, you're also from Orange County. We are live here from Irvine, California in Orange County. I'm super excited to host this conversation today. Um, if you haven't already, please join our chat on this page. Uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. I see uh, Felicia from Kansas. Uh, Nikki from Harlem. Welcome, Nikki. Uh, I see that we have Austin jo joining from Nigeria. That's amazing. We also have a panelist here joining from Nigeria. So I love that representing all over the world. Uh, we have Kira from Orlando. Kate, our wonderful, amazing Kajabi partner. Kate, welcome to the chat. Uh, we have Kajabi Joe in the chat. Super excited to um, be hosting this conversation and to be bringing you guys um, in front of amazing creators. We have uh, three right now, but we'll have four uh, at the end of this panel. Creators join us to talk about their stories and where they've been and how they've built their business. Uh, and we're just really, really excited to be able to dive into um, a hearty conversation all around what we believe is the new creator economy and how creators are making um, this economy work for them and actually monetizing their business in a way uh, that can scale. Uh, so yeah, I see. Um, please keep pumping up the chat. Uh, I love it. Uh, oh, Kate's tuning in from New Zealand today. Uh, we were just talking about this before we started that that's, this is the beauty of uh, creating a business on the internet is that you can do it from anywhere in the world. So I love Love that we are representing all parts of uh, the world here today. So I will kick it over to some of our panelists to introduce themselves. But um, just to set some context, we're going to be talking for the first 40 minutes in this panel about uh, building a business, uh, the journey to monetization, the pitfalls of monetization online, and um, really trying to get into the tactical nitty gritty of how these amazing creators have built their business. And then in the last 20 minutes, we'll be taking some uh, live Q&A from you guys, our amazing audience. So please, if you have a question, drop it in the chat um, and let us know what that question is. Our team is rounding up those questions and we'll be sure to follow up at the end of this conversation. Um, I believe that's all. Oh, I, one thing I wanted to ask too is, uh, do we have any Kajabi heroes uh, tuning in live? If you're a Kajabi hero, if you've built your business on Kajabi, please drop it in the chat. If you're new here and you're just dabbling in Kajabi and maybe you haven't jumped in yet, please let us know that as well. We'd love to know who we're speaking to uh, so we can best tailor this conversation. So yeah, put it in the chat if you are a Kajabi hero, maybe how long you've been on Kajabi. Uh, and then if you're new to Kajabi, Bobby, let me know in the chat. But with that, I'm going to kick it over to Avery. Avery, do you mind introducing yourself uh, to our audience today? Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Allie. Hi, everyone. My name is Avery Smith. Super excited to uh, be here with all of you guys. Uh, a little bit about me. I run a company called Data Career Jumpstart, where I help people who have professions or careers that they don't really enjoy, and I help them break into tech and have a data career to become either like a data analyst or a data scientist. So I mostly do online courses, but I also do some coaching as well, all online. And it's a lot of fun. I get to help people, you know, transform from jobs they don't love to jobs that they love. And I do all of that with the help of Kajabi as my main platform. So super excited to uh, be with you guys today and super excited to hopefully help you guys in any way that I can. I love it. And Avery, like I said, is a true embodiment of an online entrepreneur because we we brought Avery into the Kajabi HQ and did some filming with him. And that same night when we were doing filming, he went back to his hotel room and launched his course over the weekend uh, in a hotel room and brought all his setup and, and had an amazing launch. So super excited to talk to you, Avery, and, and learn more about that process. Um, up next, why don't we have Renee? Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Renee Yoxon. I'm from Montreal, Canada, and I am a gender affirming voice coach. And what that means is I teach people, mostly transgender people, how to modify their speaking voice to better align with their gender presentation. And I do it all on Kajabi. I have e-courses um, for feminizing the voice, masculinizing the voice, and I teach private lessons using the coaching tool. Amazing. We are so excited that you are here, Renee. And I have to say, if you haven't seen Renee's TikToks, you got to go down the rabbit hole because you are just an incredible content creator on TikTok. And I know that's how you drive a lot of your traffic. So super excited to talk about that as well. Um, awesome. And then last but certainly not least, Dominique, do you want to introduce yourself? 
Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. So my name is Dominique Broadway. I'm an award-winning financial planner or previous financial planner, uh, personal finance expert, and the founder of uh, Finances Demystified. So at Finances Demystified, we offer online courses, digital products, um, and just amazing online and offline events, helping people to feel more financially confident, teaching them about all things um, personal finance related from, from budgeting to saving, investing, trading, and really just how to build wealth overall. So I've launched uh, my course in, in Kajabi uh, a couple of years ago. Now Kajabi has been my main platform and it's been absolutely amazing being able to use this platform to help provide more help provide people with more uh, financial confidence. I also own a, a technology that a signal technology that teaches tells people when to when to trade, when to buy and when to sell. So we are in the fin ed tech space. I love it. And I have to say all of our Kajabi uh, employees, when Dominique came in to film as well, we were like, <laughs> we need your course. I know nothing about investing and trading. And I feel like I need to know that. So uh, I can just attest to the amazing content that you put out. It's it's absolutely incredible. So I see in the chat, we have a lot of people who are Kajabi heroes and one self-proclaimed superhero, which I love. Um, and then we also have a lot of people who are uh, new to Kajabi and are thinking of launching later this month or thinking of launching in the new year. So if you have not yet launched your course and you are uh, saying, hey, I am here today to learn tips and tricks so that I can launch in maybe the next month or early 2023, new year, new business. I love it. Please let us know in the chat, like if that's you, are you looking to launch your course uh, or your membership or whatever product you might be uh, thinking about in the next couple of months? Let us know in the chat. And if you have any questions, questions specific to launching that course or product, let us know in the chat. So I'm going to kick it off first. Um, Dominique, I know we talked about this a little bit when you came in here, but what was your monetization journey when you first started your online business? Like when you were, you know, you knew you wanted to teach finances, you knew you had this passion, like wh where did you even go first when it came to a product or service to sell? Yeah. So when I first started, so my, my background, I was a traditional financial planner working with high net worth individuals at a lot of major brokerage companies. And so, you know, when I first started, I thought I wanted to kind of continue that, that one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, working people one-on-one -on -one basis and, and, and helping people with their financial planning and financial coaching. Did that for a while. I uh, have a whole article about how I went broke actually doing that based on the one-on-one -on -one, uh, model. And I decided that I needed to, you know, to scale, right? So I started out doing one-on-one -on -one and I'm like, this is not going to work. I don't really want to do this one-on-one -on -one coaching. I can only help one person at a time. I want to help more people. Um, and so that was really where I started with the one-on-one -on -one and then decided from there that I needed to, as I like to say, package my genius and package what I'm offering to these, these people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And that was really um, what made me decide to launch my very first course, uh, which was the Finance to Mystify Bootcamp. I love that. And how did that first launch go? So the first launch went well. It was more, I feel like, a, 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 a slow launch. Like it, it imme I immediately launched, you know, had a few hundred people sign up, um, nothing huge at the moment. Um, and it was a lower ticket course, maybe around, I can't remember, maybe who maybe at the time might've been like 197 or 297. It's been quite a few years. Um, and then um, decided that I wanted to, you know, after I really focused on wanting to teach people about just basic personal finance, you know, over a couple of years, I rolled about 12,000 people into that program and decided I wanted to do something kind of the next level. Um, and so that's when I launched my next uh, program, which was uh, the Wealth Transfer Investing Course, which is now called uh, Wealth Demystified. And in that program, we've uh, enrolled, I believe, over a little over 6,000 people in the last two years in that program. Amazing. I love your story because I love that you started with one-on-one -on -one consulting and like really figured out what you were going to sell and what was like what your students were asking and what they wanted to learn. And then from there, it feels like your business like has naturally evolved over the years to package that up into a product that now you can sell to tens of thousands of people um, and earn a lot more from that. Yeah, totally. And I think, you know, a lot of times when, you know, course creators there or, or people that maybe now be working in a coaching or consulting capacity, we feel like we can't have an impact if we're not just talking to people directly. But over, you know, some time, I realized that everyone was asking me the same exact questions, right? <laughs> and there was really just a couple different profiles of people in their financial life and where they needed guidance. So I was really able to take that information and say, okay, these are the things that people need help with. Instead of me just saying it, numerous times throughout the day to one person and me helping 
you know, maybe the most I can help is six people a day. How about we put this all together and now I can help thousands of people a day and really be able to help more people's lives. So if you're figuring, trying to figure out like, how do I go from being the one-on-one -on -one person and you're thinking that, hey, oh my God, I can only help people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. That is not the case. You are really able to figure out what the main topics that people want and package that up. And, and you know, Kajabi has been a great platform to do that on. Yeah. And I think I really love when these panels can get as tactical as possible. And so I think the number one takeaway I just felt from that, uh, from what you just shared is write down the questions that your one-on-one -on -one students are asking. Um, that can be such a key to unlock future content, whether that be a course or a product, or even just social content that you want to use. If you write down what people want to see, you'll never have a lack of what to do next. Yes, yes. And write down the thing that you're saying all day, every day. Because if you yeah. work with people one-on-one, -on -one, you know that all day long, you are saying the same thing all day long. Write that down. <laughs> yeah, totally. Renee, I see you like totally nodding along. Have you had that same experience? Oh, no, I lost Renee's mic. Can you hear me now? Now I can, yes. I think there's a little bit of a delay between turning it on. Apologies. No. I was just saying that like, it's the exact same experience in my business. There's really a limited amount of information and a limited amount of cases from person to person about what students need. And what I found was I was going to burn out if I kept trying to teach that first lesson, like over and over and over again. So before I had a chance to burn out, I thought much like Dominique, I need to package my genius and make that course or else I'm going to get too tired to keep teaching that first lesson. And it's been amazing because now my one-on-one -on -one students are the people who really need particular attention and everyone else gets what they need from my e-course. Yeah, absolutely. And you probably get better each time to answering the same question, right? Like I could imagine that your content probably evolves and you probably get a little bit tighter on how you respond to those questions, the more that you answer them. So it's like you're learning how to better teach while also still serving what your audience wants to hear. Absolutely. Yeah. You become a better teacher when you teach more and more. Yeah, absolutely. Can you talk a little bit, Renee, about, you know, I know you build your business uh, using social media um, and primarily TikTok, like I said, um, how did that start? And like, how do you now use social media to fuel your e-course business? Sure. So I was a, a singing teacher for many years and then decided to pivot into trans voice coaching um, just because I found that there was a need for it specifically in my community. Um, and then when I made that decision, I decided, okay, I better get on TikTok. That's where all like the young trans kids are. So I made my first TikTok in, I think, May of 2021, and it went viral immediately. And my books filled up. I had too many students. I didn't know what to do. And at first I created a waiting list, um, but I just, I thought that was just a negative thing. I didn't want to be another waiting list that trans people have to sit on waiting to get services. And that was when I found Kajabi and made this e-course. And I think I only launched it in September of 2021. So it really hasn't been that long. Mm -hmm. um, but now, you know, TikTok is still a place where I'm sharing information all the time. And that does the two functions. One, of finding me more customers, but also of just sharing the things that I'm learning through the creation of my courses and my teaching so that people who can't afford the courses still get really valuable information from me. Yeah. So if you were to do it all over again, um, would you recommend to a new creator to start creating content on social platforms to kind of start to feel out what students want to learn or what people want to learn? I think that TikTok and social media is like really valuable, but if you're not prepared to capture email addresses, then don't start. Just at least have a mailing list so that when people find you and are excited about you, then they have a place to go. I had all that set up long before I was like a content creator on TikTok. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Let's talk about that for just a second. Because Coley in the chat said, building an email list was the issue for me currently. I use ConvertKit and I have Wix, but once I join Kajabi, what resources will there be to acquire traffic for that email list? So um, thank you so much for being here, Coley. Um, I definitely want, Renee, I want you to talk a little bit about how you set yourself up for success by building out how to capture emails. But with Kajabi, we have um, a ton of tools available to you to be able to build out your, e your email list. So um, we have a pipeline funnel feature, uh, which is how you actually capture people's email addresses. So you have forms on, on, a, uh, on a sales page or a landing page. We often teach that you should offer value, that you should um, give something in exchange for an email address. And so we have amazing resources and training on that. But the actual tools and technology to build it is actually quite simple. Um, all you need is a page with an email capture form and maybe an email that delivers them that value that you're giving. Um, but Renee, do you want to talk a little bit about like, what did you set up 
inside of Kajabi or wherever before you went viral on TikTok that instantly allowed you to capture email addresses? Well, I always had just like a sign up for my mailing list here button on kind of most of my pages, but my, the thing that I used to capture email addresses was I offered a free 15 minute consultation to private students and I limited it. So I made like one per day, but when that virality happened instantly, I had no more spaces left. So I realized that wasn't scalable. And so I just took my whole website down and replaced it with a landing page that said an e-course is coming soon, I think. I don't know. And then people just signed up because they were excited about that that content coming. Now, of course, I've created like multiple landing pages with multiple lead generators, little ebooks and journals and things like that. And I use those all the time to, con to convert people from social media into leads on my mailing list. I love that. Um, I know I see Ala, you've joined us. Uh, everyone, this is Ala. Um, Ala, do you mind maybe introducing yourself, um, what your business is and, and what you do on Kajabi? Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. So I'm Ala. I'm a teacher, online creative food blogger. <laughs> so mainly teach uh, people how to make beautiful cakes. And uh, I also have a membership on Kajabi. Well, two memberships uh, where I teach Eastern European Baltic food but I'm probably going to move everything to cakes essentially in the next year. So yeah, very exciting. <laughs> I love it. Um, and I see a question in the chat from Edmund. It said, um, is Kajabi only for education slash tutorial businesses? So um, Kajabi really is just the platform. What you do on the platform is up to you. And so um, a lot of our amazing creators here are teaching e-courses about a specific topic and training. Um, but we also have uh, products available to you that you can sell things like coaching. Uh, so one-on-one -on -one coaching, whatever that might look like. We have a, a brand new community product. Uh, which allows you to get a group of people together and actually sell access to that community. You can do live events in that community. You can do, uh, you can have forums, you can do challenges. There's so many amazing features within Kajabi community. So maybe you're not necessarily teaching somebody something, but you have a community of people that you want to monetize um, that functionality is available on Kajabi as well. Um, and then of course we do have uh courses, which is where maybe you're taking people through a journey uh, where they start and they want to learn something. A lot of our creators here do that. We also have what we call membership sites. So you can actually sell access to a piece of, uh, to, to a membership site that reduce, that produces, sorry, content every single month. So a great example of this is like what we know um, creators do on Patreon, where you actually pay to get access to their content behind uh, closed doors, if you will. You can also do that on Kajabi. So people would pay to get access to your monthly, weekly, daily, whatever it might be, content series that you drip out. That doesn't necessarily have to be educational or training. Uh, it could be, you know, entertainment content. It could be um, anything really that you are uh, you are creating. Uh, you can build into a membership site. So I would say no. It is not just for educational and tutorial businesses. We have so many tools uh, at your disposal uh, to make it work for your business. Um, amazing. I would love to move on and talk about. Out. maybe Avery, uh, what led you to build a business on Kajabi? Uh, I'd love to hear kind of that story. Yeah, I think the, uh, my story is somewhat similar to, you know, what's been said uh, as well as I was doing, I was a data scientist and I was already, you know, my friends were asking me, how do I become a data scientist? Because I, I actually studied engineering in school. I didn't study computer science. I didn't study data science. And so a lot of people were asking me like, oh, like, how did you get into this? Um, like, how do I get into it? And so I was already kind of doing some teaching, uh, you know, already with just people, random people that were kind of going on. And so eventually got to the point where it was not really scalable. It was a lot of different people. Um, and uh, I had to do something a little bit different. So I got into the courses and I actually, uh, I personally started by doing a workshop with about 20 people. Uh, it was really small. It cost maybe a hundred dollars, um, but I got those 20 people on on the phone on zoom for a week-long session and it was so much work but i made my first two thousand dollars and i remember thinking wow this is awesome that i can actually do something i love i can help other people and get paid to do it while i'm doing it and so i was all in after that i thought okay if i did two thousand dollars this week you know what can i do in the future and so after that i was pretty hooked and, and ready to keep going Amazing. That story is so inspiring to me because I hope everyone in the chat like caught on to what Avery was saying that you didn't launch your course and have 
hundreds of thousands of people banging at your door, you really took the time to have quality content for 20 people and you sold that and you were able to get that return on investment and kind of figure out like, oh, okay, there's like a something here and now I can go build on top of that. Um, how long did that take you from the time you decided you wanted to do this to getting those 20 people? I know Marcos uh, had that question in the chat. Like how long did it actually take you to make your first dollar? Uh, it actually was was fairly quick because um, at the time I had a, not a huge audience, um, but a, a sizable audience, maybe 8,000 connections on LinkedIn. I, prim I primarily use LinkedIn as, as my traffic source. So I, I had some I had some traffic already on LinkedIn, you know, that I could utilize. And I actually created the course or I, sorry, I sold the course before the course was ever built. I said, hey, we're doing this, this you know, this live workshop. It's going to be in two weeks from today. It's a hundred dollars. You can join. Uh, and I actually would teach. I, I made like the first lesson and I taught it that night. And then the next day I'd wake up and I'd make the second lesson. I would teach it that night. The next day I'd wake up, I'd make the third lesson. I would teach that and I go to bed anyway. So we did that for, for five different nights. So I actually sold the majority of the program before I even had built it. So once you have at least some, some way to get people to a landing page, and get them excited about what you're doing, I think you can make money quite, quite, quite quickly in all honesty. Yeah, amazing. How many people in the chat would love to learn Avery's method of pre-launching a course and uh, and making that return on investment? I know I would. Um, so I feel like this is the perfect opportunity just to share a little bit about what is on this page, which is our Kajabi Creator Challenge. And we're actually teaching just that. In this challenge, we have our amazing Kajabi hero, Ellen Yen, is joining us as our Kajabi coach. Um, and when you join this Kajabi Creator Challenge in January, we have weekly lives once a week uh, for the entire month of January with Ellen, where she's literally going to teach the framework that Avery just said that he follows, which is how to pre-sell your course before you ever even create anything and get sales in the door, get beta students in the door and build that course along with them. Um, and so in January, we'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to actually get access to that. Um, and not only will you get access to the live trainings, but you'll also get access to what we're calling challenges and homeworks that will help keep you on track towards getting those beta students. So Ellen will teach a live on, you know, the first step to take to get those beta students. And then the following week, we'll have some homework that'll help you actually get that done. Um, we at Kajabi want to make sure that we do our part in sharing education, sharing helpful stories like these amazing creators today um, to actually help get you to success. And so if you are interested, I saw some people in the chat who are like, yes, I want to learn that. And I want to learn that too. That's an amazing strategy. And it really like takes out, I mean, I don't know, Avery, if you want to speak to this, but it takes out the like fear of what if this doesn't work? I've heard so many stories of people who spend, you know, a year, two years building out their course and then they launch it and it's crickets. And they're like, oh my goodness, I, I didn't build the right product or people don't necessarily want to know the things that I'm teaching. They want to know something completely different that I didn't know because I never asked them. And now I've wasted all this time building this huge product that actually didn't give me any return on investment. And that's what we don't want to happen here. We want you guys to be set up for success. I know some of you said that in 2023, you wanted to launch your business. And so this creator challenge is a great way to jumpstart and be held accountable by a community of your peers who are also doing the same thing at the same time. So I wanted to share that because Avery, I kind of forgot that that was the way that you launched your course. So that's amazing that you did it as well. And we're really literally teaching the beta launch strategy in our creator challenge incubator. Is there any, um, Avery, are there any like things, the lessons or, uh, that you learned within launching with that strategy? Is there anything that you would have done differently that for those who are joining the challenge, they should really like think about ahead of time? I think one of the biggest things that um, I wish I knew is you don't have to make a bajillion dollars your first time that you do this, right? You don't have to have a million people in, in your course. Like starting small is totally okay. And it's a great way to get started. If you can have 10 people in your program and you have 10 people paying you, the, the dollars you make as a business owner and an entrepreneur 
definitely tastes better than the dollars you make any other way. So like, it was just so impactful for me to make any sort of money on my own at the beginning. And you can, you can start super small, even if it's just a two hour live workshop or like a one hour live workshop, that is a really easy way that you don't have to spend all that time recording, editing, doing all the videos beforehand. And you can at least, you know, kind of get your feet underneath you and, and get into this world. So I'm really excited for you guys to, to be, you know, learning through this, uh, this challenge. And I think good things will come your way. I'm, I'm excited to see what everyone makes. Yeah. I, Lydia dropped in the chat. Lydia Martin's an amazing Kajabi hero that we have that said launching and selling my course before it was built was the best decision I ever made. In addition to choosing Kajabi. We love you, Lydia. I know it's, it's actually um, like really amazing to me um, that we, uh, when you look at our Kajabi hero community, you actually see this strategy pop up quite a bit. Um, and I do think it's a really, uh, a really smart way to continue to build your business. Um, okay. Now switching gears a little bit. Um, and yes, I will I answer all of the challenge questions I have them right here uh, in the chat. So don't worry, we will get to those things. Um, but I want to make sure we get back to the content as well. Um, so Ala, I know you mentioned that you're you're kind of pivoting a little bit to uh, go more towards just cakes and, and teaching cakes. And Ala is an amazing pastry chef. We were like, all in awe of her when she came into the office. Um, but did you ever like, did you know the type of digital product? Did you know you wanted to build a course when you first got started? Um, I know you started on YouTube. So was it just a natural evolution to do a course product or was it that you had to really sit down and think about what would best benefit your business? Uh, yeah, like uh, it kind of just all happened. I didn't sit down and like think, okay, like I'm going to build a course now. And I agree with Avery. I think we forget a lot of the times, you know, we look at really successful sales course creators and we're like, oh my God, like you can just start small. And that's how I started. I just created my first course and um, I was like, well, we'll see if anyone wants this, you know? And uh, I had to tweak and change a lot of the things. And I only sold like 10 courses and like 10 people. And I focused on that and I made sure like, okay, they, I, I just want them to succeed. I want them to actually make these cakes and I want them to maybe potentially sell the cakes or be happy with their results. And then once you prove the concept that whatever course you're creating or whatever product you're selling and it works and you're helping people, then you can expand on that and go further. So for me, it was kind of like a natural progression and I learned a lot. <laughs> I've made a lot of mistakes in a way, but I feel uh, my course is slightly different. I can't really pre-sell it beforehand because it takes a lot of times like my courses take about six months to a year to record because it's cakes and they're like really fancy cakes so you have to like design them pre-plan them the only thing that I can um get through is like you know ahead of time is like maybe plan the flavors based on what students want um but I am planning to create a new course uh on helping people to get started with Kajabi like um and learning all my mistakes you know from my 10-year experience and that's something that I'm considering is doing like as a better because it would be a lot much higher value course and I think I would need a lot more experimenting and just make making sure this is exactly what people want and it's you know it's useful but I just feel like you just get started with whatever you're passionate about and yeah just start with just a few small amounts of people even if it's just a live and it's just a webinar and don't be um deflated by you know making thousands and thousands that you're comparing probably yourself to other people yeah. Yeah. um yeah I love that. Can you, you actually inspired a new question in me that I want everybody on the panel to answer, which is what is in your opinion, the biggest mistake you've made in your Kajabi business looking back that you would want to change now? I think for me, I feel that I was like, I was too proud to ask for help. And it was the fact that I thought I can just figure it out myself. But actually looking back at it now, if I actually just hired a coach or an expert or somebody to help me go faster, I would save myself several years. So I feel like that was my biggest mistake. I feel like I could have saved a lot of time by not being so proud. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's literally why we built this creator challenge was we know that people are stronger in community. Like I wholeheartedly believe that community is the heartbeat of every company and every, uh, the world really, truly. And so creating this challenge is about putting together 
entrepreneurs who are at similar stages in their business, all aiming towards a similar goal so they can feed and learn off of one another. And then bringing in amazing experts like all of you and Ellen to help guide and teach and share the, the steps that they wish they would have taken earlier on in their business. So yeah, I totally agree with that. And it's why we really created this com community creator challenge. Um, Renee, how about you? What's, what's the biggest mistake you've made and something you wish you maybe could change? been like oh. much opportunity. Can you hear me now? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I it's always like a little bit of a drum roll. <laughs> I tried to turn it on early, but anyway, um, I haven't been doing this for very long, so I haven't had a lot of opportunities to make mistakes, but I probably would have just started earlier because I was really, really resistant to making an e-course in the beginning, because like Dominique was saying, I felt that my value as a coach was in what I could offer individual students. I didn't think that a, an e-course would be valuable. It wasn't until I realized I was making people wait for my for my work that I decided I had to make an e-course. So if I could do anything differently, I just would have been less fearful about starting in mm. the first place. Yeah, that's so good. And knowing that if you put yourself out there, you're going to attract the community that really needs your content and thinking of it more. I mean, we talked about this, Renee, when, when we had the chance to sit down, but like thinking of it as serving your customers and your students and your community, rather than I'm trying to sell you something always will lead you to a better spot as a teacher. Absolutely. Dominique, how about you? What's one thing you would change or that you maybe regret or uh, just a learning, I guess? Yeah, I would say it's going to be two. Um, one would be having to uh, agree with Renee. Um, I wish I had started earlier, right? Um, I think, you know, many of us like may doubt our, our skills, our knowledge and our value. And so that was one of the biggest things. I definitely wish I had launched that specific course earlier because people wanted that information. Um, so kind of wanted to second that. And then the other one would be uh, not charging enough. I think that, you know, a lot of times as, 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 course creators as content creators especially also a lot of times too as women we undervalue ourselves um and you know because of that like we won't charge what we're worth and so I wish you know I had priced myself right even with my first course um and really realized the value of the information that I was bringing you know the you join my course and you can earn tens if not hundreds of thousand dollars more a year just by understanding the market so my course needs to be priced as such right it shouldn't be a hundred dollars it should it has more value so that's the other thing that I would say understand your value and not just your value but the value that you're bringing to people's lives and package that and add that into uh the, the price that you're charging for your for your products yeah, Dominique, I know you love data. Um, and actually this this conversation of pricing came up in the chat um, with someone asking like, what do I, what price can I sell my course at? Obviously we know that there's so many variables that are gonna be different across different products, but do you have like a standard way of how you view pricing? Is it like two times the amount of value they're getting or is there like a secret nugget? I know that's a big question to ask about pricing your course, but any wisdom you can provide for someone who's just starting out to figure out their price point? Yeah, that's a really good, really good question. So I would say, I mean, there's actually a few factors. Um, one would be, um, how much you're having to show up in the course or how much someone else, maybe a coach that you have on your team is having to show up. I feel like if you're selling a course or a product where you yourself or someone on your team does not have to show up, they're just buying the product. I think it can be lower price, you know, maybe 47, 50 bucks, less than a hundred dollars, or maybe even less than $200. But if you have to show up, teach once a week or providing some sort of office hours, factor in what your hourly quote unquote rate is, right? And you may not know exactly what that is, but so if you don't, look and see like, what are other professionals in your field? What are they charging for their hourly rate, right? Let's say the average financial planner or coach may be charging 350 or 500 bucks an hour, right? And just kind of adding that in, right? So maybe like, hey, I'm showing up a few times add in a couple hourly rates, plus, you know, you're getting access to this content. And maybe that's how you come up with your course price. Maybe that makes it $1,500 or 2000. And, and, you know, also thinking about, do they get annual membership to this content, monthly membership, do they get lifetime access? And so I would say when you're thinking about your course, write down all these factors, what are your students getting, you know, when, how often, who are they getting, and then start putting a value to each of those. And then that's how you can start determining 
what your pricing structure should be for your course. Yeah, that's super tactical. I love that you shared that. I also think like one thing to keep in mind as an entrepreneur is that you're not locked into a price for the lifetime of your product. Like pricing is actually one of the best variables for marketing our products, right? And so I think a lot of times entrepreneurs get crippled at the fact that like, oh my goodness, like I can't start and I can't price my product because then I that's it. Like that's what I'm valued at for the rest of my life. And that's absolutely not true. You, the beauty of pre-launching your course with your beta students is those are founding beta students, uh, founding members that you can treat as such, which is I'm learning. I am learning what my pricing should be. And let's say I priced my first course at $100 and I realized like, wow, I'm way over delivering and people are way seeing the value in this. Then maybe the next time I launch it, I move that price up a bit. Or maybe I realize like, hey, students are giving me that feedback that $100 feels a little too steep. I know someone in the chat said, I feel like my, my students might be price sensitive. Like maybe that's a sign to you that you're not delivering on the value that you said you were delivering on. So maybe it's about going back into the content and reworking and adding a few modules or adding some one-on-one -on -one sessions or adding something that makes it feel like the $100 is actually the value that they're getting. So a price point I is just a tool. Go Can ahead. I second that too? I think that that's like really important. I think people a lot of times get stuck on like, oh my God, if I set this price, I'm like married to this price forever. You're not, right? So you can change the price as Ali is saying. And like I said, like she was saying, I love data. And one of the interesting things that I found out after selling all these courses is that the higher the price point, the more we sold. Really, really weird, right? It blew my mind. And so when we raised the price up like to over, you know, really to the night 1997 price point, we were selling more than if we sold it for a thousand. And it was because people thought it was way more valuable. There can be way more content. And we attracted a different client, a client that never really asked for refunds, a customer or a member that never um, disputed or anything because they were buying in at a higher price point. So definitely play around with your prices and look at the data and see what's the, the perfect spot for you to sell your product at. Yeah. I've also never seen, like I've seen courses, uh, I've worked at Kajabi for almost six years and I've seen courses from $10 to $10,000, $20,000 for a course. So like there is literally no rhyme or reason to what is like the right or wrong method. Uh, it really depends on you, your audience and the value that you're giving. So if you feel like, oh, this feels really high, I guarantee you there's probably a course out there that's triple what you're asking for. Um, so don't be afraid to test in your market. Um, cool. Avery, same question for you. If you could go back, anything you would change, anything you regret, um, anything that you've learned in your first couple of years on Kajabi? Well, I love what's been said so far by everyone. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, I think for, for me, it's a little similar. I'm going to use a sports analogy. When I launched, after I did that workshop, I was like, all right, I'm in. I'm going to build the best, you know, data analytics boot camp of all time. And with with like, I guess it was technically my second product, um, but really it was my first one um, like that was actually course, right? The other one was just kind of a workshop. Uh, but regardless, early on, I was like, all right, I'm going to build the best boot camp I've ever seen. And I tried to hit a home run. I, I was like swinging for the fences. I really wanted to make the best thing possible. Uh, and that was great, um, but it was a lot of work and there was a lot of uh, bumpy patches in the meantime to get there. And so, you know, one of the things I'd probably go back and, and tell myself is, you know, instead of trying to hit the home run right out the gate, maybe we could just try to hit a single, like try to get some smaller things underneath my belt and then build upon those because it can be when you're launching your first online product, it can be very overwhelming to actually do the whole thing. If you set the bar all the way up here, it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of time to get there. And so why not just set the bar here initially, you know, build up to there and then you can build up a little higher then build up a little bit higher. Um, so that was one of the things that um, I struggled with when I first got started was I was trying to do too much for too little money, just like Dominique was saying. Um, so, you know, pick a small little product, make it, pack it with tons of value, you know, make your customers happy and then you'll be, you'll have customers right in line for your next product. So I would say start small and build upon that. Yeah. Did you use any, like, what was your, your um, indication of the product type that you ended up choosing? Like what helped you kind of shaved off, shave off all the other things that you were doing that were unnecessary? Was there any like sort of data or insight or like, how did you decide like, okay, yeah, actually I'm just going to focus on this. Uh, I think, unfortunately I learned that kind of the hard way where I ran this program for a couple months and uh, I had never really run this type of a program before necessarily like at, at, at scale. I had helped individuals one-to-one, -one, but actually like being in the program and running it, it made me realize, oh, wait, this really works. This doesn't really work. 
I'm teaching people this, but it's a lot of work and it's a lot of demand on me and it's not really getting results. So it was a little bit of a trial and error for me to actually figure out what worked best for everyone. And it got to the point where I, I launched this big boot camp. Uh, it was great. I ran it for about a year. Uh, and then recently I actually kind of took that boot camp and kind of retired it. I took a, a section out of it, maybe half of it. And that's my new boot camp. And I'm seeing way more results. My life's way easier with just like half of my original product because I'm laser focused on getting one result for one group of people, not getting, you know, 10 different results for 10 different people. If you can just focus on a really small niche and serve those people really well, there will be enough people for you there that you'll be very happy with, with, you know, how the program goes. Um, so now I'm, I'm focused way less on helping everyone and way more focused on helping this select customer base that I've kind of chosen. Um, so once again, starting in a small niche is always a good idea. Yeah, I will, I hope everyone is taking notes on this, but I want you to write down, like, stop focusing on everyone and start focusing on your community, your people, the people that you can serve the best with the most amount of impact. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, right? And like, we're building these businesses to be sustainable for the future. So you don't have to, like I always say, when you log into Kajabi, there's like a million and one ways you could build a business in Kajabi. That's kind of the beauty of it, but it's also kind of the thing that makes people people stop and have so much fear in getting started is that there's just so much. And so wipe away all that clutter, get really crystal clear um, where I think the challenge can be super helpful is like, we're literally going to give you the four weeks of steps to take to beta launch your course. Like it's not log into Kajabi and go do everything that we have to offer. It's very singularly fo focused on getting you a return on your investment and launching, pre-launching your beta course to your beta students. If that's you, if you want to learn that, join the challenge. And in January, you will get the step-by-step -step guide to be able to do that um, because it's not a marathon or it's not a sprint. It is a marathon and you have to build yourself up for a sustainable business future. Um, I want to jump into some of the questions that we're getting in the chat. If you have um, questions that you have not yet, yet asked, please put them in the chat. We have about 20 minutes left. So we're kind of going to go rapid fire through these. Um, but please, if you have any questions for what our panelists have said, if you have questions about the cha challenge, put them in the chat um, and we'll go through those really quickly. Um, Lydia said, I agree. I found out that less is more. Amazing. Yeah, that is, uh, that's the lesson I think we're all learning together is that we have to focus. Um, we have a couple questions about the challenge that I want to answer really quickly. So um, somebody said, what is the time commitment for the challenge? So um, every week in January, we'll be doing a live session that's about an hour long. We will have replays for those, though, if you're not able to attend those hour long sessions. So that's every Friday in January. Um, so that's four weeks. Uh, and then we also have this challenge community um, where we have these homework assignments. Uh, the homework assignments really shouldn't take you that long. I would say probably less than an hour. Um, so really it's like about two hours a week, but I think you're going to get out of it what you put into it. And so the more time and commitment you can focus on building uh, out what Ellen teaches and doing the homework assignments and interacting with your peers in the community, uh, the more you're going to get out of the program. But it shouldn't really take you longer than a couple hours a week to finish. And we're here to help motivate you. Of course, replays available. The homework will always be available so you can do it in your own time frame. But we kind of boxed it into that four weeks so that you really have like you're setting 2023 up for success. By the end of January, you'll have beta students in your course. Like I want to do that. That sounds amazing. Everyone who put in the chat that you wanted to launch in 2023, why wouldn't you join in January and get that in the first month of the year? Um, so yeah, that's the time commitment. Um, somebody asked like, what does it take to join? All you have to do is click the button on this page. It will have you sign up for a 60 day free trial of Kajabi. So that is the benefit of joining the challenge. It's absolutely free for people who sign up for Kajabi on this page. Um, we're doing all of this content. We're bringing in these amazing creators. We're bringing in Ellen. We have a creator community that you'll be able to be a part of, and it's all for free just for signing up for our 60 day free trial. Um, 60 days will put you into, I guess, February at this point. Um, so the entire time you're building in the challenge, you're actually doing it for free on Kajabi. And so the hope is that by the end of January, you'll actually have some sales coming in for your course with your beta students, and you won't have even paid a dime for the platform. Um, so that's really like our commitment to you is we want to help get you to success in the next 60 days on Kajabi. So absolutely free to join. You can click the link on this, but uh, <laughs> click the button on this page, um, which will take you to our sign up below. Um, we're super excited about that. Let me jump into some of these questions for our panelists. Um, okay. 
let's see. How did you launch? Oh, after you launched your first course, how long did it take you to see some income? I know some of you guys have answered this, but um, maybe uh, Renee, do you want to maybe chat about this a little bit? Like after you first launched uh, your course, how long did it take to get some sales rolling in? Sure. It was extremely fast because there were people who were really excited about this product and it was something that didn't really exist that much. So within um, the first month, we had brought in $15,000. <laughs> Wow. Oh my gosh. I feel like that deserves like an applause. That's incredible. Thank Do you, you want to talk a little bit about that um, experience on TikTok? I know you, the reason why you had such high demand was because you went viral on TikTok. I'm sure you get the question all the time. How did you go viral on TikTok? Uh, so for folks who don't have that, like uh, that experience of, oh my goodness, you know, I have all these people uh, banging at my door to get into my course. How, what would you like encourage them for uh, doing social media content and trying to get as many people excited about their, their things? Sure. Well, maybe I can just talk quickly about another course that I launched subsequent to that, which was a yeah. teacher training program. So it had nothing to do with like, uh, you know, B2C launching of a course. It was a totally different audience. And I only had a list of about 20 people. Uh, maybe 30 and we got about 10 people signing up but like I did what others in this chat have done and like pre-launched a teacher training course and then created it over five weeks and now I've sold that course at least three times and I'm going to do it again next year probably twice uh, so you know what I did was I had to create like a new list and so I had to tailor content for a new audience which was voice teachers singing teachers who wanted to pivot into the trans voice space and I went looking for them. I just went on Facebook into the groups where they congregate. So you basically just have to go where your audience is and actively look for them. You know, in the case of my first courses, my trans voice courses, TikTok was the place because that's where trans people like to congregate there and discord. But for teachers, it was Instagram and Facebook. And so you go where the audience is and you actively look for them. Yeah. Somebody had asked a little bit earlier too, like, I know we'll teach this in depth in the challenge, but do you maybe want to give your version of what does that actually mean to pre-sell your course? Like, do you, you outline the course and you tell people that that's what you're going to do? Like, what was your uh, framework for pre-selling? Sure. So I created a landing page, which kind of doubled as the outline of my course. So it was a sales page and on it, I had like week by week, what I was planning to teach. So I had like a general outline in my head, but I wanted to be able to adapt the course based on the feedback I was getting from the teachers because I had never done a teacher training course before. So I sold it based on the outline of the course. And then every week I would ask for feedback from the teachers and say, Hey, next week, we're going to talk about resonance. Do you have any particular questions about that? If you had any issues with that, with your students. And so I would make sure to include the answers to their questions in the course as I was creating it. Mm, I think that's a really, really smart tactic. And it goes back to what we talked about all the way at the beginning of the panel, which was ask your students what they want to learn. It can be so simple. I think people overcomplicate things a lot, and this does not have to be overly complicated. Um, maybe Avery, someone in the chat asked, Mark asked, um, when did you, when you pre-launched your course, um, did you offer a discount up front during the initial phase? Yeah, uh, I definitely did because it makes a lot of sense for me. Uh, like it's good for both parties, right? Like, hey, I've never really taught this before. Like uh, I'm going to try to teach it. Here's a discount for it in exchange for your feedback or exchange for a testimonial. So I think the majority of the time offering them a little bit of a discount, if it's $500, giving them $100 off or giving them $200 off or whatever. Uh, at that point, like I, I was just happy that I was making any money whatsoever. Um, and there's people in my program, you know, who joined, like the first person who joined, I think paid uh, probably $200 for my program. And they now have access to that same program that I charge $2,000 for. So it's a win-win for them. Cause I, you know, I got to test and kind of prod and understand what they were thinking. Um, but they also got in this $2,000 program for literally, what is that? A 10th of the price, which is a good deal for them. So I definitely would, you know, offer them a discount and say, Hey, just know that this is not completely built. It's not completely finished. I'm going to need your feedback, but in an exchange, I'm giving you a discount. So I, I think it's a good model. Yeah, totally. And then you have people who are your founding members who feel extra taken care of. They feel like they have a behind the scenes look at you building your business. Like those become your like true advocates for your business, potentially even eventually affiliates for you, uh, which is great. So I love that model. And I think it's a really smart way to get people in to learn about your course, but also to build a relationship with some of your like best students. 
Um, Ala, I wanted to ask you about um, your how you've built uh, your your YouTube following. I know that's the, the channel that you do a lot of content on. Um, how did you start to transition people from your YouTube channel to your email list? Like, how did you start building a list? Uh, yeah, well, I wish I started doing that earlier, but I started uh, with lead magnets. So now under every YouTube video, I have a link to three uh, free recipes that I do. And then obviously, once they get into my email list, then I email them or do another free webinar or whatever it is that I'm doing at that time. And that's how I get them. Um, but YouTube, you know, I started it with free, right? I did YouTube for free for seven years. I charged nothing. And when I did change it to a paid model, I did find it very, very difficult. So for anyone who is starting out, I recommend kind of having the paid and non-paid content from the contest content from the beginning, because, you know, I taught my audience not to pay. So it took me, you know, several years to transition. And actually I had to get the whole brand new audience that was willing to pay for my content. So yeah, so lead magnets are through there, but mainly I sell through Instagram because I feel like that's where I connect most to my audience because they see like the real life, the real me. And I think it really just depends on the product you do. Like Avery was saying, he does it on LinkedIn. I think uh, Renee says she's on TikTok. So there is just basically no excuse. You just need to understand where your audience is hanging out and where can you capture them for what you do and connect with them on some sort of platform that you like and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, totally. And somebody had asked to, um, like, I, I don't know if you could speak to this a little bit, but they said, um, how would, can Kajabi also help a blogger and a content writer who is frustrated with some sites that generate less income? So like, maybe talk a little bit about your transition from uh, free content to paid content. Like, how did you get that new audience? How did you get people to have a willingness to pay for you? Because uh, I think that's a really important nuance that you just shared, which is a lot of entrepreneurs are told, give away your best content for free, give away your best content for free. And yes, I understand why that is a strategy. I understand why we want to over deliver. And I think you all embody that really well. But that is different than never asking people to pay for your content ever. And I think a lot of content creators get into that rabbit hole. Um, so how did you start to like, once you got them on your email list, how did you train them to get them? To yes. Pay? Yeah, it's it's a really good question. I think it's definitely a, a harder transition, especially to get those first like loyal uh, customers or people that like, you know, believe in your product. Um, I started with a really low price. So just to kind of show them the value that they get. So for $7 a month, when I just started, or no, it was $7 a year. <laughs> so it was seven dollars a year it was crazy you know they were getting like 600 recipes and then um basically i gave a lot more value for the paid content so when people did sign up they felt like okay this is worth so much more and that gave them uh trust with me to buy anything else and even if i increased the price they still stayed with me it, with regards to new audience that i had to attract i actually had to educate them so i did a lot of lives i did a lot of posts explaining and showing behind the scenes like how many hours it actually takes me to create content because a lot of the times people don't realize that you know posting a recipe a video recipe uh on youtube which is you know five minutes long takes roughly half a day maybe a day you know with all the photography you know and behind the stuff so when people appreciate and see how much it actually takes you to create content they might be more willing to pay for it because it kind of questions their mindset it's like okay will you work for free and the you know and that's the kind of the question I asked like would you work for free and spend all your days and not get paid and then people start to like think about it but it is definitely a long process it's a longer process um, I guess from my experience uh, charging more you will attract a better clientele because people are already used to spending money for good quality products so you save yourself a shortcut rather than doing something cheap and trying to convince people to pay for it if that makes sense mm -hmm. so in my opinion I would rather do a better quality product or a service or whatever you're doing for a higher amount and like not deal with the hassle trying to change people's mindset that it, you know you should be paid for your work <laughs> Yeah, totally. Um, Patricia asked in the chat, um, on your first course, should it run for one week, two weeks, et cetera? What's the best length of time? 
honestly, Patricia, I think if you asked every single one of these creators, they all would have different lengths of courses. They all probably have different price points on their courses, and they all probably have multiple products that speak to different audiences and have different pain points. Um, so I really don't think that there's a one size fits all approach here. I think it's about understanding what type of value you want to deliver in your course, because maybe it's a really simple course that you're teaching something that could be consumed in one to two weeks. And that should be the time limit. Maybe it's something a little bit more extensive. Like I could imagine, Dominique, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but learning, investing, and trading probably going to take a little bit longer than one to two weeks. Um, and you probably really need to nurture your students and their, their journey. Uh, same with you, Renee. Like I, I could imagine voice training is a like lifelong lesson. It's not something that you can just consume in a week and be like, I'm good to go. I've changed how I, how I, uh, you know, use my voice. Like that's probably not what happens. So I really, do think uh, that it's it's dependent on the value that you serve, but Renee or D Dominique, I don't know if you have thoughts on that as well on course length. Uh, the question, that yeah, that's I, I totally agree, Ali. I mean, it really depends on what what you're doing, and you know, you can even launch like don't like don't overthink this thing, right? Like you could do mini courses if you want, which can be three or five day like intensives. Um, but I would say really sit down and map out your content. And that's, that's what I did. Like most people in the panel, I pre-launched, like I did not create any piece of my course before I sold it. Um, and I did $66,000 in the first hour of launching it. Right. Um, and all I had was an outline, but I knew what I wanted to teach, but I knew that it was because I am teaching a complex topic that it wasn't, it's not something you can do in a week. And if so, if I did teach it in a week, you're still going to need some support from me going forward. Right. And so I broke it down with one one topic a week to make it more, um, you know, kind of consumable. But I think that's up to you. You, you have to realize you are the expert in this topic. So whatever topic you're deciding, you're the expert. People are coming to you because you're the expert. So act like it, right? Sit down and say, if my student is going to be successful, this is how long it's going to take. And then you determine the length. If you need to change that over time, that's fine. But I would say, start there. and Remember that you are the expert in this topic. Yeah. Yeah, and I just wanted to drop in as well is that I was also really worried in the beginning, like, oh, how long should my course be, you know, and first it was like a month, now it's three months, now I tested with 10 weeks, so don't be afraid to change it, it's not set and it's not permanent, you can change your course length and change your course material, and basically change everything about what you do throughout the course, after the course, so nothing's set in stone, but I think when you just start, you feel like you have to get everything perfect, and yeah, just don't focus on getting everything perfect because it's not going to happen from the first try. Just be open-minded and like let it let go of the idea that, oh my God, it has to be this or that. Just more like a flowy situation, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I mean, that's the beauty of you all being your own CEOs, right? Like you get to decide what you do in your business. You get to decide what works and what doesn't and when you want to pivot and when you want to change. Um, and I think that's like a beautiful lesson out of this. It's why I'm sure a lot of you are entrepreneurs, right? You have this thing that you care about and that you know a lot about that you're passionate in. you want to serve and help people and you want to be your own boss and be able to do that on the way on your terms. I know Renee, we talked about this a bit when you came in, like that was a huge perk of being an online entrepreneur is having uh, this business on your own terms. Yeah, absolutely. I have chronic pain. So I, a 40 hour work week was just never accessible to me. And I needed to be able to work from home so that if I have a pain flare, I can work from my couch over there, or I can move my schedule around. It's like totally customizable to my needs. And it's made like a working life accessible and kept me out of abject poverty. So I'm pretty grateful to good choppy. I, uh, I am so uh, grateful and appreciative of you and your story. I think that's, I think it's so inspiring. Like, I think that's one thing that we don't talk about a lot is like this idea of being your own boss and like being a CEO and having that authority and that autonomy, like you get to build the business that you love. And that's something that we should never take for granted, but we should always be so thankful that we get to do. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, cool. I know we're right at time. So I want to be respectful of all of our amazing panelists, as well as our uh, attendees. Um, 
please drop in the chat. What's like the one piece of value that you're going to take away from this? Is there like a learning? Is there an insight? Is there something that you're like, oh my gosh, a total mindset shift. I've never thought about it that way. Please drop it in the chat. I'll just give a last minute, um, you know, kind of housekeeping notes around our challenge. Um, I want to just shout out if you're an existing Kajabi hero, we definitely want to get you into this challenge. If, if you feel that it's the right fit for you, if you maybe haven't, you know, launched your course yet, and you're really interested in beta launching a course, um, please join our Kajabi Facebook. Facebook group. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be having uh, an announcement where we're, we'll share with our Kajabi Hero community how they can join the Creator Challenge. And so uh, join our Facebook group if you're not in there, if you're an existing Kajabi Hero and you want to take part in this challenge. Again, if you feel like it fits your needs for your business. If you haven't joined Kajabi yet, please click the link on the button. You will get a 60-day free trial. The trial starts immediately, so you'll go into uh, about February with your, with your trial. So it's completely covered, um, completely free the entire time of the challenge. Um, with this free trial on this page, you'll get access to the challenge community where we'll be doing those weekly live sessions with Ellen, where she's going to teach you the playbook that every single one of these creators, which by the way, like that was not planned that every single one of you have done a pre-launch. I think that's just awesome that it worked out that way. Um, but every single one of these creators pre-launched and sold a beta access to their course and made a return on investment, figured out how they were going to build their business and then scaled from there. So if you want to learn that tactic too, for absolutely free, click the link on this page and you will sign up for a 60 day free trial of Kajabi. You'll get access to those weekly live trainings. You'll get access to homework content that will help you actually execute on the, uh, on the topic. I think a lot of times we have a ton of great content, but there's no like actionable steps. And that's not what you're going to get in this challenge. You're going to get amazing content from Ellen followed up by here's exactly what you need to go do in the next week to execute on the content that she's teaching. Um, you'll also get some, some fun prizes along the way. We have some really awesome challenge swag that if you complete the challenge, you get a nice, like I completed the creator economy or the creator challenge shirt. You get a little pin. We also might be having a special event uh, in Irvine that you might get invited to if you complete the challenge where all these amazing creators will be back for another panel. Um, and this is all included with that 60 day free trial when you sign up on the link on this page. So I think that answered all the questions that were in the chat about the challenge. Uh, but please, please, please let us know if you have any other questions at all. We are happy to answer. Um, but can we just say a huge round of a thank you and a round of applause uh, for our amazing creators that are on this panel. You guys are the reason why we do what we do at Kajabi. I mean that wholeheartedly. The fact that we get to empower you to have the business of your dreams, to make $66,000 in an hour is insane and amazing, Dominique. So congratulations on that. Someone in the chat said that too. Um, you guys are the future of the creator economy and you are um, just inspiring creators all around the globe to get started. And so for those of you in the chat, if this is what you as aspire to be, you can do it. Everyone here has done it and you can do it too. We fully believe that and we want to help support you in 2023. So join the creator challenge. We'll see you on the inside of the community. You'll see these amazing faces as well inside that community. And we're so excited to support you and your business endeavors in 2023. So thank you everyone. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.